Many people have heard of the Edmund Fitzgerald and her tragic sinking with her entire crew. Perhaps from Gordon Lightfoot's haunting ballad or assorted documentaries and news special segments. She is, however, lovingly remembered simply as the Fitz. Some of us have even built models of her. From historical society magazine covers to t-shirts to mugs to pins, charms, and postcards, the legend lives on. Yet few know about the actual boat herself. Let's look at this legend of the lakes, the Edmund Fitzgerald. A contract was given to the Great Lakes Engineering Works on Detroit's Rouge River by the Northwestern Mutual Life Insurance Company for the construction of a new iron ore carrier. At 729 feet, she would be the longest vessel on the lakes, and her beam of 75 feet and depth of 39 feet would complement her status as a queen of the lakes. Launched on June 7, 1958, she was under long-term charter to the Columbia Steamship Division of the Old Bay Norton Company. Cargo would be loaded through 21 hatches, each with a single-piece steel hatch cover. The boat's cavernous cargo hold could carry more than 30,000 tons. Her engine was a steam turbine that delivered 7,500 horsepower and pushed her across the lakes at just over 16 miles per hour. Before long, the Fitz began breaking records. On July 13, 1960, she set the record for iron ore carried through the Sioux Locks with 25,828 tons of taconite in her belly. Just over a month later, she broke her own record carrying 26,451 tons of ore through the locks. On August 3, 1962, she delivered the largest load of ore ever to be delivered to Toledo, 24,231 tons. A little more than two years later, she broke that record by hauling 25,702 tons into that same port. In 1968, the Fitz again set the record for ore hauling through the Sioux, with a whopping 30,000 tons of cargo. The Detroit News reported on October 23, 1968, that the Fitz had, in each of six separate shipping seasons, carried more than a million tons of ore through the Sioux Locks. She was the flagship of the Columbia fleet and the pride of those who sailed her. Her guest quarters had deep pile carpet and bathrooms had inlaid tile. Her guest lounge was furnished with selections from Detroit's Upper Crust department store, J.L. Hudson. The lounge itself also sported picture windows that looked aft across her deck. Her crews maintained her with pride, and the company saw to it that only the best captains commanded her. When it comes to her end in a massive storm on November 10, 1975, everyone from well-written maritime historians to armchair know-it-alls has a theory. From shoal damage to magnetic anomalies to UFOs, there are so many theories and speculations that it has become simply static. Those of us at the top of Great Lakes research history even debate the cause among ourselves, and we always will. I am constantly asked what I think happened to the Edmund Fitzgerald. So, here's my answer. The cold hard fact is that no one knows exactly what happened to her that night. I doubt that even her captain, Ernest McSorley, knew exactly what was dooming his boat. The Edmund Fitzgerald rests forever at the bottom of Lake Superior. And that's all there is to it. If anyone ever tells you that they know exactly why the Fitz wrecked, just walk away and do not buy whatever book or video they're selling. If they bring up UFOs, 
you may want to walk faster, or perhaps even run away, just to be on the safe side.